What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Behind me is the Venetian poker room and it's going to be a few minutes before we get the day two restart underway and uh, a couple things I want to talk about. First, there are 255 players left. 225 make the money so uh, RIP to 30 people who are going to have a really bad start to their day but uh it's gonna start pretty soon i have a pretty big stack blinds are restarting at the 3k level so i have way more than 100 big blinds just super deep and uh, looking at my table to start looks like it's gonna be uh, a good time uh not too tough of a table to start at least but a lot of short stacks and i'm sure people will bust and new people will filter in so uh that's how i feel about this day too all i want to say last year i uh, played this had a big stack entering day one and uh I shipped the damn thing. So let's try to run deep here. This is a three day event, so it's gonna be a long tournament. Can't win it all today. So I'm hoping for a really long day, hoping to play like 10, 12 hours here at the nation and have a good time. So that's it, I'm done talking. Let's get into the action. Restarting in level 14, when I come back to my stack of over 400,000 in chips, I pick up ace queen of spades on the button and action folds to me. Looking at the small stacks of the small blind and big blind, I think the best course of option is to limp here, experimenting with this limp strategy. And when the small blind calls, big blind checks his option. We're going to a limped pot of nine, seven, four, two clubs and a heart. Not a whole lot for me. I think I just totally whiffed and the boards hit our opponents more. So action checks around. When we see the turn, which is the queen of hearts now, that's amazing. They check over again and with top pair, top kicker, plenty of draws on the board. Let's get some value and I bet out 10,000. The small blind is smart enough to fold with the big blind. Little stubborn, he makes the call with a short stack here, about 60,000 left. We're going to a river which comes in eight. Board is a lot more connected now and when he checks for a third time, I'm debating between betting again for thin value or just checking back and not thinking that this is a spot I need to go for and you know, I go for it, of course. I bet small, 13,000, hoping to just get called by a worse queen or worse pair. But sadly, he insta shoves, announces all in for a hair over 60,000 total. So it's about 50,000 for me to make the call. And why did I put myself in this tricky spot? I'm mainly just frustrated at myself for not checking back. And here we are in this decision. Is this player ever going to be overplaying a one pair hand? Is he ever bluffing in this spot close to the money bubble? Probably not, but I feel like for the right price and I have such a strong hand, top pair, top kicker, I'm curious and uh, yeah, let's just flick in a call, hope for the best and he sadly shows me pocket eights. Yep, no one's bluffing, especially for the tournament life near the money and yeah. Nice river to this player. I guess the only good thing is that if I played my hand ace queen as played, I actually would have been stacked if I raised preflop. So because I limped, I had the opportunity to not get stacked. Sadly, I still got stacked regardless, but here we are moving on. You know some of my favorite people to see at the poker table? They're big shot business people, the hedge fund type. Because it's no secret that hedge fund managers love to bet, whether it's at the markets or at the poker tables. In fact, Steve Cohen, legendary hedge fund manager and owner of the New York Mets, has invested over a billion dollars into one of the most stable assets in history. One that's seen unprecedented demand as a result of market turmoil around the world and even outperformed his own hedge fund, 0.72, by more than 10 times this year. I'm talking about fine art. Fine art is emerging as one of the most sought after investments right now. In fact, New York Times has called it bulletproof even among historical market turmoil. And even as early as last year, Bank of America's chief investment strategist recommended investing in real assets like art to save your cash from inflation's bite. That's until I found Masterworks though, the fintech platform built specifically for art investing. Now I can just pull up Masterworks site and investment choosing from a catalog of offerings backed by physical and multi-million million dollar art. With inflation through the roof, demand for Masterworks has skyrocketed, but use my link in the description to skip their wait list. And if you have a portfolio over $50,000, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with a registered investment advisor. All you have to do is click the link down in the description below to get VIP access. Big thank you to Masterworks. Personally, I think it's a great opportunity to check out, especially with how crazy the market has been so far. And let's get back to the hands. Down to 360,000 in my stack. Not a good start after the first hand, but time to rebound with aces. 
I raise it up to 9,000 and the small one makes the call. He's the other big stack at the table and he covers me. So hoping to play a big one. The flop is queen three deuce rainbow. He checks it over to me here and I decided to bet 5,000. In hindsight, it seems a little too small as I'm trying to build a pot against this big stack. Anyways, for 5,000, he makes the call. The turn is the five of diamonds. So we improve to a straight draw. And there's a backdoor flusher out there, but it seems irrelevant with the ace of diamonds in my hand. So when he checks again, I size up to 22,000. I think I can get a lot of value from any queen in this spot. And good news, he does make the call again. So I'm pretty much just putting him on a queen, maybe a stubborn pocket pair below a queen, but that seems unlikely. Let's see a river now, which comes another five. Board is paired and I basically have the nuts. It's unlikely that he's going to have a set or full house or trips here. So with the best two pair possible, he checks for a third time and I'm definitely betting. And I'm trying to figure out how much I wanna bet. I ended up sizing to close to the amount of the pot of 75,000. We're playing deep. We can easily bet big because it's not a huge part of a stack, but getting these trips is crucial. After thinking things over for a little bit, he ends up tossing in a call and I win. Show the pocket aces. They're obviously good. Nice to get three streets of value against probably just a queen, but here we are. A good way to rebound after that first hand. Moving on to level 15 now, blinds have increased and I pick up ace queen off suit once again. We're in early position and there's an early position plus one player to my right. He raises to 10,000. He seems to be a solid reg here in tournaments and I'm ready to battle. I think my hand plays better as a three bet, so I decided to do that. I raise it up to 30,000. Action folds around to him and he defends. Makes the call. We're playing in position in a three bet pot. Let's battle here. The flop comes jack five, three, two diamonds and he checks it over to me thinking that my hand is good enough to just bet small, hoping to just take it down with ace high a lot of the time. I think a lot of the hands that he's going to be holding will whiff this flop a high majority of the time, so I bet out 16,000, but he ends up making the call. So I'm thinking that when he calls this bet, he either has a jack, a smaller pocket pair, or maybe even diamonds. We're off to a turn, which comes a deuce. He checks for a second time and thinking that I'm behind with ace queen high, I've improved to a gut shot trade draw and hoping to see a free river to maybe spike a queen or ace. I check this one back. The river now comes a board pairing three. Now this player is first to act. He ends up betting out 62,000. It's a pretty big bet and based on this sizing, it seems ambitious to think that he has one of those smaller pocket pairs under a jack. You would think those hands would probably either bet pretty small or check a high percentage of the time. So I can comfortably throw out hands like pocket sixes all the way up to tens out of the equation here. And with this big bet, it seems like he's either saying he has a jack or some sort of missed diamond holding. And yeah, I think this player is good enough to bluff for sure. And if he has just missed diamonds, then obviously my ace high is going to be good. So call me crazy here. I'm a non-believer and I think ace queen has plenty of showdown to hero call here, especially not holding a diamond in my hand to unblock some bluffs. Here we are with ace high, call me crazy. I stick it in and he shows me the eight seven of diamonds. Ace high is going to beat eight high and I win. It's a good feeling to know that this hero call went my way and it's nice to call light and get all the chips pushed my way. Now over 500,000 in my stack. We are 227 left in this tournament, playing hand for hand until the money, which the bubble burst relatively quickly. It shortly gets announced and the bubble hand was crazy. Eight deuce offsuit cracks, pocket kings for a massive pot all in preflop and sends kings to be the stone bubble. Let's go, shout out to eight deuce offsuit sending us all into the money. All right, currently entering break number one of the day. It's a good start, I would say. Started the day with 400,000 in stack. My peak was 600K, which is sick, and now we're in the money. Now, uh, my stack dwindled a little bit to 500,000. Um, just blinds went around a few times. I raised a few times, didn't win anything. Uh, just trickled down, but it's nice to have the luxury of being a big stack right now at this stage of the tournament with about 200 players left. So I can just pick my spots and survive being card dead. Essentially, that's what happened for the last uh, hour or so. No complaints, still staying with 500K, plenty of life, and um, yeah, 200 left, hoping for a long day. That's, that's all I care about. Can't win the tournament all at once today. After the break, we progress to level 18, where blinds have increased, and I pick up Ace Jack off suit. We're in the cutoff with over 500,000 in my stack, 
and Ashton starts the low jack, raising to 22,000. I think my hand here plays much better as a three bet. So let's try to isolate or try to take down the money in the middle here. Just take it down preflop. I size up to 55,000. The button folds, but now the small blind player decides to wake up with a good hand, and he goes all in for about 180,000, about 18 big blinds total. The slow jack tanks and ends up saying out loud that he wanted to re-raise, but folds. And here I am with this hand that doesn't feel comfortable facing a four bet jam from the small blind specifically. And yeah, I think my hand is just dominated a lot of the time. And one of the issues with three betting light is that sometimes you're just gonna have to punt 55,000 into the middle and kiss it goodbye. So that's what I'm gonna do. This player also seems overly tight. So I let my cards go. I fold and chip down. But the very next deal, the dealer gives me ace 10 off suit. A little bit worse, but certainly a playable hand. So when action folds to me, I raise up to 21,000. Unfortunately, I get immediate action. The player to my left, someone who is much older, plays pretty tight, probably an OMC. He three bets to 41,000. Facing a min raise from this guy, action folds to me. And look at his stack. He's got about 20 big blinds, and I just don't see any point in calling here as I essentially just burn 20,000 chips a lot of the time to see a flop. So I don't want to be in a tough spot against a very strong range. I just let my cards go as my hand also doesn't really perform well as a four bet jam. So I'm chipping down some more, down to 430,000 now. And then I see another familiar sight. Ace Jack offsuit once again. This time I'm in the small blind and there's a low jack raised to 22,000. Action folds to me. Looking at this player stack is about 250,000 in there. So just under 30 big blinds. And with my specific hand, I think it's a good candidate to just three bet all in. The whole point of this is that I block really strong hands like ace, queen, ace, king, and I can also just take it down preflop a lot of the time, especially when a lot of players fold more often than they should. So when the big blind folds, this low jack player doesn't look happy about my all in and disgustingly folds. I'll take it. Definitely seemed like he had a hand better than ace jack, but I'll happily take it down preflop and chipping back up into this spot here. Back with around 500,000 in my stack, I peel pocket aces on the button, baby. This is what we've been dreaming of. Action folds to me, and I've been doing a lot of limping, so I'm gonna limp some stronger hands. I call the 10,000. Small blind player who has been raising me a ton. He does nothing different here and raises to 60,000. It's a massive raise, and this is what dreams are made of. The big blind is smart enough to get out of the way because he likes money, and now onto me here. With under 500,000 in my stack, you know, I am definitely going in here. I re-raised to 150,000. Let's build a pot here and the small blind insta jams. He covers me. I snap call. This is why I folded ace 10 earlier. Want to preserve chips and find a better spot to get it all in with. And what better timing? Aces all in preflop for a 1 million chip pot. This player has pocket kings, so a massive cooler, 80% favorite to win this and be the chip leader of this entire tournament. Let's win this, let's run it out, and the flop is king high. Oh man. Oh no, don't improve on the turn or river. And I went from basically having an 80% chance of running very deep in this tournament, chip leading the entire tournament with 129 players left, and coming in, busting out in 129th place. This was a very painful hand to describe again, to relive, and to tell, but here we are. I get my aces cracked, and I am out of the tournament. So uh, a good way to sulk is by eating some Panda Express. I was gonna say, this fucking sucks, man. I took a walk before. I did this, like I'm feeling fine. It just sucks. I'm gonna eat some food, some comfort food to make me all feel better with this Panda Express, but it's like, I have a million chips with the big blind. I have a million chips and I basically make the final table. Or at least I place really deep. I was a hundred and, I bought 129. If I have a million chips, I feel pretty confident in myself to, um, to make the final table. 80% chance to win, that's why poker's that's why poker is the best game, the great game. Uh, it hurts, it sucks. I'm on to the next run, so thank you for uh, the support. It hurts right now. 
really hurts because this is the tournament that I was really confident in being able to win. But end of the day, like I still have to run really well to bust in 129th place. I was in for 1100 with one bullet, out for 3,000, 14 bucks. Could have been a lot more, it feels bad. But uh, end of the day, yeah, I still, you still have to run really well to even make it as far as I did. Run even better, to gotta run even better to have aces hold up. That's all. Thanks so much for watching. On to the next one. Still cash for money, which is good. That's all.